In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use custom CSS with WordPress. Custom CSS is particularly useful if you wanna change an element on your theme, could be a font size, could be a color, and there isn't actually an option to do that within the theme settings. So with custom CSS, you can override all that and you can basically do your own thing. Now, this is a question that I get asked a lot within the live streams and in the comments, so I thought it was about time I did a video on it. So, let's go. It's Alex here from WP Eagle. Hope you're all well. Thank you very much for watching. Now, if you're new here, hello, welcome, good to see you. Why not click on the subscribe button? I would love to have you as a subscriber. Just click on that button down there and be sure to click the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I tend to do it every single week. They're all around WordPress and affiliate marketing and, and all that kind of good stuff. So I think you're gonna like them. Do it now. One other thing before we get into the custom CSS stuff, go check out wpeagle.com. It's my website, it's full of WordPress stuff. I'm talking about articles, videos, infographics, tutorials, and some WP Eagle merchandise, which at the moment is just t-shirts, but there's gonna be some other real cool stuff soon. So yeah, go check it out. So custom CSS. Well, that sounds techy and complicated, doesn't it? Well, it's not actually that bad. I've learned how to use custom CSS all by myself. I've never been on a course or anything like that and I've just generally kind of hacked my way around WordPress websites for a good few years now and I'm able to get by with a bit of custom CSS. So I'm gonna share with you what I do and how I do it. I mean, it may not be the, the right way of doing it or the, you know, whatever correct way that a proper developer would do it, but you know, it works for me. I'm sure it's gonna work for you. It's not that hard and yeah, I'm gonna share with you a few CSS um, attributes, properties, I don't, know, I don't even know what they're called. Useful things that I use, like font size, colors, hiding stuff, adding margin, adding padding, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna share with you the ones that I use a lot of the time. If there's something that you're looking to do and I haven't mentioned it, then leave a comment below and I'll do my best to reply. Hey, I might even make a video about it. So yeah, do that and I'll, I will read them all, honestly. I do read all the comments that I get on the channel. Whether I reply or not, it depends how much time I got. But hey, <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get on the computer and I'm gonna hack around with a few websites, show you some custom CSS. I think you're gonna like it. Let's go. So we're gonna add some custom CSS to this website. Regulars on the channel will recognize it. It's Bow Wow Tech. You can find it at bowwowtech.co.uk. It's one of my Amazon affiliate websites that I created in a previous video tutorial. You find a link to that tutorial in the description of this video if you wanna go and build one yourself. So anyway, let's scroll down, let's find an element that we can play around with. Oh, the heading here looks pretty good. Let's have a tweak with this, maybe we could make it center, we could remove this dotted line. That sounds like a good place to start. So, in order to play around with the CSS and create some custom CSS, the best way to do it is with the inspect function, which you can get by right clicking choosing inspect uh, within Google Chrome. So you are gonna need Google Chrome in order to follow this tutorial. So if you haven't got that, uh, pause this video now and go and find Google Chrome. I'm sure you'll find it if you go to Google and type in Chrome, download it and install it. When you fire up the inspect tool, you get this panel down the bottom. The left hand side, we've got the code of the page. Right hand side, we've got the CSS that's being applied to that code. So. Basically, when it comes to web design, you've got the HTML code, which does all like the layout and all the content and all that kind of stuff. Um, layout to a certain degree, I, must, I should say. Uh, and all the styling, the colors, the fonts, uh, and all that kind of stuff, and layout, to be fair. <laughs> this kind of just puts things in order, but you can move stuff around with CSS. Generally, all the look and feel is done with CSS and, and the content and other bits and bobs is done with the HTML on the left here. So to select an element of the page we wanna have a play around with, we need to click on this tool here, which says select an element, which is kind of handy. It's a little square with a, a little pointer in it. Now, once we've clicked on that, it allows us to select and highlight areas on the page. So let's play around with this heading. Let's give it a click. We see it's highlighted it there in the left-hand panel. On the right-hand side, we've got the CSS that's being applied to it, so we can scroll down and we can see that there's some things going on here. So this particular attribute, dot the content space H1, is setting the color. Now colors and things you can set within the theme options on Kingdom, so I'm not gonna worry too much about 
colors today. I'm gonna do some other stuff instead. Let's start by removing this dotted um, bit of border that we've got. And I can see that here. You see that border hyphen bottom, and then it's got the width, which is one dot, sorry, which is one PX, which means one pixel. You see the style is dashed. And the color is there, which is a color code. And you can get these color codes um, just to search for hex color codes in Google or fire up Photoshop or something like that, and you'll be able to copy and paste them out of there. With CSS, you can actually just type in like the name of colors. So I could like just type in blue. And we can see that it's changed to blue. Now any changes that I make down here are only temporary. As soon as I refresh the page, um, they'll disappear. No one else will be able to see them. Uh, in order to commit them as a permanent change, we are gonna need to copy and paste the code into the theme settings, which I'll get to in a second. So if we wanted to remove this border bottom completely, just take that out, type in the word non, and it's gone. If we wanted to make it really fat, we could type in like four picks. Then if we wanted it to be a solid line, we type in the word solid. And if we wanted it to be red, we could type in the word red. There we go, look at that. So to commit this to um, the settings of the theme and make it a permanent change, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of this. I'm gonna come up here and go to customize. I'll open it in a new tab just so that we can kind of keep this going. I don't have to keep going back and forth, in and out and all that kind of stuff. Then if we scroll down and find additional CSS, now in here, I've already got a whole load of code because I've been doing some custom CSS. And in fact, in the original tutorial, I do some custom CSS. You might not have anything in here, in which case you can just start at the top. If you do have some stuff in here, then just scroll down to the bottom. Press enter to start a new line and then just paste it in. Now, as I only changed the border, I can probably remove all the rest because that's just kind of duplicating. There we go, let's click Publish. And that's all done. Let's go back, let's refresh. Let's close this for a sec. Let's see if that red line is still there. It is, so that's there and it's, it's done it on every single heading uh, on this home page. Doesn't look too bad actually. Should probably have done it orange if I'm honest, but hey. So let's fire up the inspector again. I just wanna show you a few more um, things we can do with this heading if we want to. See, there's our new bit of CSS, which is overriding the uh, original CSS. See, that's got a line for it now. But let's have a look at these other attributes that it's got going on. So it's got letter spacing. That's an interesting one to know about. So that's the space between letters. Um, which can be measured in either pixels or this EM measurement, which I still haven't quite got my head around what an EM is, but I'm sure if you Google it, you can probably find out uh, and find a de description of it, which will be way better than, than me trying to describe it. But we can press up and down on our keyboard and we can adjust this so, you know, that's really spaced out the letters and spaced them out even more, so you might wanna do that. You can actually change this to a pixel number, so one PX would be the pixel value. And again, we can make that go up and down. If we wanted to commit this, because I've already got this .kd featured h1 in my custom CSS, I can just take this. Don't need to take the whole thing. Uh, and then drop that in. It needs to go between the little brackets, so about there is right. You see we've still got that bracket at the end. Then publish. We've got this margin bottom, so that's the space at the bottom. And doesn't actually seem to do much. We can have negative margin numbers. If once I go negative, it does stuff, it's pulling the rest of the content up. So you might wanna adjust that. We've got text transform, which is making the whole thing uppercase. We could change it to lowercase. Although this font doesn't really look that much difference between upper and lowercase, does it? But there you go. If you're not unsure about what you can enter for a particular attribute, if you just take out whatever's in there. Uh, Chrome will actually suggest um, the available options and you can just choose one. You can even capitalize, which again is not very obvious on this particular font. If we wanted to add a new attribute, 
I'm just gonna share a couple that are quite useful. One that I like is text align. So text hyphen align. And you can see there as I'm typing stuff in, it's suggesting other ones that uh, you could use, but align is fine. And we can type in center. And there we go, it's centered. Looking good. Another one that I use now and again, let me just click here and do a little couple of tabs to create a new line, is text decoration, see it there? So you know, you can underline, you can do a line through like it's crossed out, all kinds of cool things with text decoration, so that one might be useful for you. But there we go, I think that's that's about it for that heading, and let's just, oh, don't need to copy all of it, what am I doing? Let's just copy the bits that I changed, so, text transform, I did do capitalize, but it hasn't made much difference, but hey, yeah, let's add it, why not? So copy that into here, paste that in, and finally was the text align. I'm not gonna do the line through for now. <laughs> I think it's fine as it is. There we go. So there we go, that's all published. Let's go and have a look. There we go. So um, let me just jump onto another site quickly and show you a couple of other things. I'm gonna go over to uh, Beer Shirts, which is running storefront theme, just to show you that it's pretty much the same on every theme and um, yeah, we'll just do some other stuff. Hey, let's go. So here's Beer Shirts. As I said, it's running storefront theme. You'll find a link in the description to a tutorial on how you can make a site like this if you'd like. So let's do something a little bit more complex. Let's remove this search box, which is not something that I'd actually recommend that you do because search boxes are very useful and every site should have one. But I don't know, if for whatever reason you've gone crazy and you wanna remove this search box, uh, this is kind of how you might do it. Again, right click, inspect, choose the little uh, selector tool, come up and find the box, let's give it a click. Now we can see this is made up of a number of elements. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to head up towards the top. You can see that like this is the first one, the div class site search, and then within that, we've got this, and then within that, we've got the form, then within the form, we've got a label, and then within, or maybe not within the label, but definitely within the form, we've got the input, and then we've got the button, and then some other input stuff. Generally, I say with CSS, you're gonna to wanna to, uh, kind of highlight the whole thing. And I think that's gonna be this one here, this um, div class site search. So to get rid of it, I could just create a new um, bit of code by clicking on the plus, dot site search, tab down for a new line, type in display. Now this is a very useful um, CSS attribute because as I say, it helps you remove stuff. So display, and then it's given us some options. And what I want is none. Oh, there we go, it's gone, perfect. So let's copy this, go to customize again. Go into additional CSS, down to the bottom, create a new line, paste it in, click publish. Let's refresh and just see if that's uh, worked. It has. So that's gone, but this is kind of floating around in the middle, isn't it? It should be over here, that'll look much better. So let's do that with some CSS too. So I'm just gonna, oh, I think I missed it. Let's go back to the tool. There we go. Now there, I think I've just highlighted that one particular link to About Us and so generally you wanna kinda go up to the top and select the whole thing. And it looks like I probably wanna go up this high. Yeah, this is where I wanna be. So I can see that there's some attributes over here that we can tweak. There's the float. Uh, attribute which basically, as I said, it was floating around and it's floating around to the left. We wanna float it around to the right. We'll just type right in there. That's moved it over. Uh, it's got a bit of margin on the right there. Let's let's get rid of that because I want it to be right up against the edge. But let's just put zero in there. And it's still not actually lined up. If we look, look, you see that it's not quite lined up. So we can put some negative numbers in here. Let's knock that down. I'm pressing the down arrow on my keyboard, by the way. Uh, let's knock it right down to, well, that's too far, it's gone off the edge. Um, I'm just gonna use my eye. <laughs> that looks about right. It's perfect now. So let's copy all of this. Go back into customize. Paste it in. 
We didn't actually adjust the width, so I'm gonna take that out. Click publish. Oh, and it says there's a problem, which is kind of handy. Stops you from breaking the site. Actually, the problem is, is there's not enough brackets. This at media thing at the top is to do with responsive design and basically you can set different CSS uh, attributes for different screen sizes. So that's how responsive design comes about. And you know you can set different shapes and sizes and colors and stuff on mobile screens, iPad screens, big screens, whatever you like. But the problem with the CSS is that directly after doing one of these kind of at media command type things, you need a bracket, one of those pointy brackets. And those brackets have to contain all the stuff you wanna do for that screen size. So let's end with another bracket and that should fix it. That makes sense, so we've got this attribute for whatever reason is just targeting screens that are bigger than 768 pixels, so it won't work on mobiles because I think they're smaller than that on top of my head, but I'm not gonna go too much into responsive design in this video, it's it's too much to talk about. Um, and this video would yeah, go off on a tangent and be really long, so we're not gonna do that. But yeah, so it's targeting just screens that are bigger than this, and that's why we need to have these brackets that contains our CSS. Let's click Publish. Let's refresh. There we go, looking good. Now, I didn't actually wanna remove the search box, because I said that'd be a crazy thing to do. So uh, if I wanted to undo these changes, just come in here, delete that out, and we're all back to as we were. Perfect. That's it then, we're all done. So that brings to the end of this video. Has that helped? Has that made it clearer? Or has that just made it even more confusing? Let me know in the comments if you've been able to use some custom CSS, if you've been able to do what you wanted to do with it. And so I would love to hear from you and I do read all the comments that I get. If this video was useful, do click the like button, it really helps me out. If you're not already subscribed, then I think you should. You can do so by clicking on the eagle up there. Make sure you click the bell. If you wanna watch some more videos, of me talking about stuff. The vlog channel is over there. And here's a couple more videos chosen specially for you. Hope you enjoy them. Till next time, bye for now.